Hi there, very good evening. Uh, welcome back to the series of lectures on advanced research methods, session number five. Uh, last week or the last class, we had uh, a session on the measuring variables, how to measure those variables, whatever the variables you want to study. Uh, then tonight we're going to uh, discuss further, which is the hypothesis, research objectives and uh, research questions. Uh, the first thing I'm going to answer tonight is uh, the hypothesis. There is uh, always a question, the meaning of hypothesis. Literally in English, hypothesis means you believe something to be. You believe something to be. Right, an example would be, let's say, if you hear some sound suddenly at home, you hypothetically believe it was a uh, thunder. You believe that way. Or well, someone says, no, it is not thundering. It is a tire that bursted in the junction. That is another hypothesis. And someone would say, not both of them, there was a shop in the junction, in the, in the shop, there was a gas cylinder where they used the gas cylinder to cook some food. And that gas cylinder has bursted. These are all hypotheses. In fact, you heard only one, one sound, one big sound. And that may be from one of those hypotheses, that one of those hypotheses may be right, or maybe all of these three uh, are not the right ones. You may have a different hypothesis. The answer you would find later about what that sound was may be uh, a different thing than all these three, four, five hypotheses we believe hypothetically. That's what I said. If you have a question and you find an answer, in fact, we can use the word, you guess an answer, a pure guess, based on what you know already, you, you guess purely and you think this would be the answer. So that's what I said. Hypothesis means you believe this to be something, whatever you believe. And anyone can believe anything. Anyone can believe anything, no problem with that. But the reality is after you believe something, you should not take it for granted. You should not say that is exactly right. If you hear the sound, and you should not be adamant that the sound is this. You can't. All of you have certain hypotheses here. So what we do, we should do the research. If you hear the sound, and if you don't know what it is, but you, you hypothetically believe that's the sound of a thunder, and you go out and check the sky. Otherwise, you go to the junction and check whether it's a tire of a car or maybe a, a gas cylinder of the shop or maybe something else. You go and check it. This is what I'm calling research. So. If you believe something to be, let's say if you have a problem in your company and you believe certain reason for it, if your employees are leaving very fast and you believe some reason for it, and if your relationship is sowing, then you believe some reason for it. If your kid is not studying the way you wanted him to study, then you believe something behind. You, you can only believe, you can only guess. It is not uh, uh, really the answer, maybe it may be, it may not be. So to finalize, to decide what the answer is. The only thing you could do is to do a research, to do a research. So hypotheses are just beliefs. You believe the answer to be, and you got to do a research and find out what that problem is. Is that answer correct? When you find out, yes, meaning if your hypothesis match with what you find out at the end of the research, you say you accept your hypothesis. The hypothesis, you, you hypothetically believe something that is the truth. You believe that way, you conclude that way. Or else, uh, if you find out something else, you, you hypothetically believe that sound was some thunder. And if you find out finally it was a cylinder burst, then you reject your hypothesis. The, the hypothesis you believed earlier to be the thunder, you reject it. Okay, so you have two options here. If you do the research, you either accept the hypothesis or reject it. And you should have a big mind here. You should not be adamant to, to be so strong with what you hypothetically believe. You should do a research. And the outcome of the research is what we can believe. So you should have a big mind here to accept what you found out at the end of the research. Right. So hypothesis, uh, if you really, really believe on the hypothesis and you really adamant on that, it may cause a lot of problem. Maybe if you believe your employees are really living for this reason, and if you don't do a research and you only believe that, it may be a big cost for you. You may lose all of your existing employees. And if you believe if you have some problem in your family, then you believe something to be. 
If you don't do the research, it's, it may cost your life. It may resolve your family. It may end in a, a divorce. So that is why you can believe anything. That is fine. But you should do a research and find out if it is yes or no. And then you have to accept what the research says. You can't accept what the hypothesis said to you before. So we have an idea roughly what hypothesis is about. So all of us, we have a nature of believing something. If you see something, if you find some problem, or if you, if you experience something, you believe something uh, wrong here, and this should be this. This is because of that. Something like that. That's human nature, and we should. But all we have to do is to do a research and find out, is it correct? You test that hypothesis. You test that hypothesis. That's, that's the terminology, testing hypothesis. And you prove it or you, you disprove it. You prove it otherwise. You accept it or you reject it. Let me come to the topic now, having said the definition of hypothesis, simple understanding, very simple. Now, as usual, I take these IVs and the DV, the same example, blood sugar, uh, diabetes, that's a problem. So that is a problem, diabetes. And uh, the, the conceptual framework says food has the connection with the blood sugar and the exercise has the connection with the blood sugar. Now, you have come to this conceptual framework. I think you remember from the very beginning, I said, you never get the problem handed into you immediately. When the problem is uh, existing in, in anything you have, you always see the symptoms. From the symptoms, you drill it through and you find out the problem. From the problem, you further drill through and you find out the factors that is causing the problem. Now, after you find all this out, after you find all this out, you can come across with some idea or some hypothesis. That is what the concept today's nights that I'm going to teach you here. The first hypothesis, I'm calling it HA1, alternative hypothesis one. I'll, I'll explain what alternative is about because I'm going to discuss about the null hypothesis also tonight. So let me tell you what it is later. I have a hypothesis here. We call it alternative one. The reason why I'm calling one, we have another hypothesis, two hypotheses here. So I'm calling it one. Alternative hypothesis one, it is this. The blood sugar of you, of this person, of this, of this patient or this personnel has a connection to the food he consumes. That is the first hypothesis. The second hypothesis is the exercise you do has the connection to the blood sugar you have in your blood. The second hypothesis, HA2. So simply this, you have found out the problem, the DV, and you have found out multiple IVs. And you believe each IV has some relationship with the DV, with the problem, you believe. You don't know because you have come across to this hypothesis through your literature only. There are literatures, it says food can influence your blood sugar. Exercise can influence your blood sugar. And there are many more. We have taken only two examples in here. This is based on the literature, but we don't know whether this food is really connected to this personnel and the exercise is really connected to this personnel's uh, problem. We don't know, but we only can believe. That is why I'm calling hypothesis. So the first hypothesis is this, food influence the blood sugar, the food consumption, the food you consume influence the blood sugar. That is first hypothesis. The second is the exercise influence the blood sugar. That is the second hypothesis. So you only believe this at the moment because according to the literature only, we have come across up to this point. We didn't do any research. From this point onwards, we have to do a research and test whether this is correct. From this point onward, we have to test whether food influence the blood sugar of this guy or exercise influence the blood sugar of this patient. That is what we have to do, testing hypothesis. So technically, if you have the conceptual framework with the DV and the IVs, each IV has a relationship with the DV. That is what the hypothesis. So number of IVs we have, number of independent variables we have, number of factors we have, 
the equal number of hypotheses we have. So we have to test his, each hypothesis. So we have to do a research on it. Now, to test this simple understanding, you measure the food of the personal person's consumption, the, the, the consumption of the food, measure it, and you measure the blood sugar of the person as well. So you measure the, the consumption of food and measure the food, uh, the, the blood sugar also, and you put them in a graph and you can find out whether there is a relationship. If there's a relationship, if you find out a pattern in your graph, you can say, yes, so your hypothesis is accepted. And if you see no relationship in the graph, we can simply say this hypothesis is rejected because this food is not influencing the blood sugar of this patient. Simply this, right? So very simple concept. Let me come back again. You build your conceptual framework and you connect each IV, each factor to the problem and each factor to the problem is what we call hypothesis. So if you have three factors, you have three hypotheses. If you have two factors, you have two hypotheses to test. Okay, so this is the basic, this is the basic. Let me go further. Now, let me talk on this one here. So I said, uh, there are two types of uh, hypothesis. One is alternative and the other one is the null hypothesis. Let me explain this to you. Uh, we write this alternative hypothesis, HA1, H alternative one. If you have many, HA1, HA2, HA3, things like that. And the null hypothesis, we write them like this, HO1, HO2, HO3. Now, simply understand this. I said what hypothesis is about clearly. There is no doubt on that, I, I, I hope. Now, the next thing is about types. Number one is alternative hypothesis. Alternative hypothesis is this, that you want to prove. You want to prove. You want to prove. Okay. Alternative hypothesis means you want to prove there's a relationship. And the null hypothesis means you want to disprove there is no relationship. You want to disprove there is no relationship. Simply this, right? I'll explain this with three more examples in the, the following slides. Let me let me finish this one first. So there are two types of alternate uh, hypothesis. Number one is alternative hypothesis and the null hypothesis. Alternative hypothesis is the hypothesis that you have to establish. You have to prove there's a connection. The null hypothesis is the hypothesis that you have to disprove there is no connection or something like that, All right? Now, do you remember, I always take an example of uh, Wazima from here to tell you to study this problem, to take an example. Now, definitely you may have to try, you may have to try to prove the food he consumes has some connection to the blood sugar in his body. You may have to prove that. Because you strongly believe that it may be the reason why his blood sugar is high. And on the other side, you strongly believe exercise doesn't influence his blood sugar because he's always and sporty and he's into gym games and so on. So exercise is not influencing his blood sugar. Exercise is not managing to put the blood sugar down. He's still a diabetic. So exercise doesn't influence his blood sugar. So you see, exercise influence Vazim's blood sugar. This you have to disprove, okay? If you disprove this, it is easy for you to give the treatment because the treatment is only one. You have to do the food adjustment and your blood sugar is sorted. But if you don't disprove exercise, you have to give two recommendation or two medicine or two doses here to say something about the food and the exercise also. So that is why whoever they do research, they always prove certain things and they want to make a treatment on that, whatever they prove. And they disprove certain things to cancel those IVs out of the list. Now in Wazim list, food and exercise was there and you cancel exercise if you disprove there's a connection in his blood uh, to the exercise it does, okay? So let me take an example to understand this further. Look at this. Now, 
they have also say there's a question here whether the world is a flat world or a spherical world okay now long ago some 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 centuries ago the whole world was believing uh, the world was flat okay and some scientists came in and they they said the world is not flat anymore the world is spherical so to convince the world to believe this world is not flat it is spherical to convince the world you have to do two things number one you have to disprove this hypothesis null h01 you have to disprove the world is flat okay this is what you do first because the world is already believing this world is flat so you should disprove this world is flat first that is what i am calling null hypothesis you nullify this you cancel this statement you nullify this so the world is flat should be nullified first first thing and it doesn't mean that if you nullify the world is flat the world is going to be spherical no you have only nullified that statement you said the world is flat no it is not flat you have nullified that you have proved it it doesn't mean that the world is spherical still so the next thing is you have to alternatively prove the world is spherical that is what i'm calling alternative hypothesis let me come again the world was believed to be flat some years ago and some scientist came in and he said he proved the world is not flat the world is spherical in shape that is fine to do this you have to do basically two things the first thing is you have to disprove the, the existing message the existing knowledge the existing knowledge the world is flat should be disproved you have to nullify this so your first hypothesis h01 is the world is flat this one you have to disprove and disproving this statement this hypothesis is not going to establish the world is spherical you have to further prove alternatively that the world is spherical so you have to do a research on this and you have to prove the world is spherical in shape that is why i am using a statement here until h01 meaning until the world is flat is disproved and the ha1 alternative hypothesis the world is spherical in shape the world is not spherical we have to do both the world is flat we have to disprove that that is the the null hypothesis we have to nullify that in addition to that we have to alternatively we have to prove the world is spherical in shape that is when you can establish you can convince the world the people to believe we are in a spherical world not in a flat world okay on example let me take another example to understand this further here i have taken a legal example in here do you know if somebody commit a murder the police arrest the guy and they have to produce the guy in the courts now the police cannot uh, punish him only the courts is allowed to punish him the police only call him an accused suspect he is suspected of this murder that's all the courts would decide later right uh so the police has to prove that this guy has committed the murder right and the judge should be convinced and the defense lawyers of this suspect they would have to fight for two things number one they have to disprove the police first the defense lawyers should disprove the police police says this guy has done the murder the lawyer has to disprove that first if you want to if you want the judge to drop this case this this uh, criminal charges you have to disprove what police says so if the police says this this man has murdered that man and uh, you may have to disprove that maybe you say this murder has been done by a left handed man but this my my client is a right handed man so how come he did it so it may be one of the argument you use to disprove the police and if you disprove the police it is not again enough for you because whatever the police said is disproved on the next date police is going to bring in some more evidences to try to prove you again to be the criminal so if you really want to win the case proving or disproving police's case nullifying police's hypothesis you have to alternatively prove that my client didn't do this murder you can do it this way the murder took place last month 
during that month, my client was overseas. So no chance of murdering here. He can't be overseas and do the murder here in Sri Lanka, he can't. So you do the alternative hypothesis and you're proving it as well. You do both of these, so that you win your case. Now, I think it's, it's more clear. Let me come again, once again. Uh, the police would prove the criminal to be the criminal, so they bring some evidences. And the defense lawyers fighting the case for the, the accused has to do the argument in two terms. Number one, they have to disprove the police. That is what I'm calling. You have to nullify what police says. You have to cancel that. So null hypothesis, you have that. Whatever the police trying to, to establish here, your lawyers should nullify that. So that is the null, null hypothesis for your lawyer. It is not enough because the police would come back with some other more evidences to establish that you are the criminal. So your lawyers should further fight establishing alternatively, this is not done by my client because my client was overseas at that time. So you are doing both of this. Then you can win the case. You can uh, get the judge to drop the cases against you. Let me take another example to do this. Another example, your practical example here. Now, last Monday, you walked in home late last Monday. And when you walked in home, you had a big shout from your wife. So you, you, you believe because she was shouting because uh, you came late. That is a hypothesis. You had a hypothesis, HA1. If you come late, then wife is angry. So she would shout at you. Uh, and this is a theory now. If you come late, your wife will shout. And this happened last Monday. And today, you came late again. When you come late today, you have two things to be tested. Number one, you came late today. So there is a theory that if you come late, you get shouted at the gate. That's one thing. And today is, unfortunately, the wedding anniversary. Okay, so two things. Now you want to make sure whether, is it because I'm late or is it because of the anniversary uh, thing? I'm forgetting the anniversary thing. Or is it because of both? So you test one by one. First, what you do, you nullify the first one. I mean, it's not because of the lateness today, because it is not the major case today. And you, you test it. I came late. Is that why you are angry? Then she says, no. Then you, you nullified it. Your hypothesis is nullified. It. It's, it's not a problem now. It, it, it's not a problem. It's not because she's angry. And then you go to the hypothesis now. Alternatively, you have another hypothesis that for getting the wedding anniversary. And you do a test on that, it may be that, or it may be something else as well. So I think it's clear now to, to study something, to establish something, you should definitely uh, cancel the theory you have already. In Wazim's case, uh, exercise has a relationship, has an influence on the blood sugar. And you have to nullify that because he is a sporty already. It doesn't make any sense to his body. Exercise is not a problem to him. He does exercise, still the blood sugar is high. So adjusting the exercise is not going to solve the blood sugar of him. That is why you test all of those and you nullify that. And you find out the alternative ones, but instead, but instead of exercise, it should be food. Instead, it should be stress. Instead, it should be the max stress or whatever. You know, so that is what alternatively, alternatively it is, it may be for that way. So alternative hypothesis, null hypothesis. And we have to test both. And let me come again to recap what I said. The null hypothesis states what we expect to see based on our current knowledge, okay? And you have to disprove that. The alternative is the present new idea, okay? So the null is what we know. The world is flat, that's what we know. The, the new fresh idea is the world is spherical. So if you want to do this, you have to establish both. You have to nullify the previous knowledge and you have to establish the new knowledge so that you can convince the world to believe that the world is spherical in shape. So this is the basic of your hypothesis. And let me teach you something. If you do a research for your master's or degree, or maybe for your PhD, uh, 
you have to write these in a word. There are so many different ideas to write. I have brought in some ideas. Number one, the greater the consumption of food, the higher the diabetes is. There is one way of writing, right? This is one way of writing, this is correct. Otherwise, there is a relationship between food and diabetes. This is also correct, another way of writing it. There will be a significant correlation between exercise and diabetes, that is also correct. If you consume more food, then the diabetes will be more. That is again, another way, different ways. You can word them in different ways as you like, but make sure if you have three hypotheses and you have to have three statements like this and write all of those three in the same style. Don't mingle, don't, don't uh, mix different wording style. One wording style, follow one of those. It depends on the research you do. So there's an idea to write your hypothesis in your research paper. So I think that is it on the hypothesis. And when we complete the class, if you have any question, let me clear that to you. Now let me go to the next uh, part of it which is the research objectives. Now, it is very easy. If you have a hypothesis, one or two hypotheses, your objective is to find out or study the relationship in that hypothesis. Uh, example, your first hypothesis is uh, food influence diabetes. That is your first hypothesis. The second hypothesis is exercise influence diabetes. And these are the only two things you're going to study. So your research objective is simply this, to study the influence of food on diabetes, to study the influence of exercise on diabetes. So you have only got two objectives, two objectives, simple. So the number of factors are equal to the number of hypotheses you have. And number of hypotheses you have equal to the number of objectives you have. And next is about the research question. Now, again, simple story. If you have your research hypothesis, you make a question for each hypothesis. First question is this. Now, your first hypothesis is food has the relationship with the diabetes. That is your first hypothesis. And the first research objective is to study the relationship between food and diabetes. So to study this, you have to answer the right question. The question is, is there a relationship between food and diabetes? That way. Or oh, does exercise influence blood sugar or diabetes? That way. It's different ways of writing question. You can use either way. But you have only got two research questions here. You have two IVs. You have two hypotheses, therefore. Because of that, you have two objectives. And finally, because of this, you have got two research questions. If you answer these two questions, these both questions, you would be finding out the answer or you, be, you would be meeting your research objectives, these two. And if you meet these research objectives, you are automatically testing your hypothesis of these two. So your research is done, simple. So let me come again on the mechanism, on the, on the equation here. Based on the IVs, we make the hypothesis. Number of IVs you have is equal to the number of hypotheses. And number of hypotheses you have is equal to the research objectives. And number of objectives you have is equal to the research question. And if you go in the reverse order, you answer the research question, you meet your research objectives. If you meet all of your research objectives, you would be testing your hypothesis. And that is the end of your research. Simple. There is no confusion on that. So now let me have a look here. This is the problem I took earlier to understand this. Now, this is your symptom here. Symptoms are here. Based on this, we figured out the problem. And based on the problem, we figured out the factors. And if you have this, what is your IV? What is your, what is, what are your IVs and what is your DV? We know that productivity is your DV. Work environment, leadership and the rewards are your IVs. And since you have three IVs, we have three hypotheses here. What are they? Work environment has a relationship with the productivity. Leadership has a relationship with the productivity. 
rewards has some relationship with the productivity. These are the three hypotheses we have. So the research objective is simply this, to study the relationship between work environment and productivity, number one. Number two, to study the relationship between leadership and the productivity, which is number three. Number two, number three is to study the relationship between rewards and productivity, which is number three. So we have three objectives. Now, finally, the research question, the research question is, is there a relationship between work environment and productivity? Number one question. Number two research question, is there a relationship between leadership and productivity? Number three question, is there any relationship between rewards and productivity? Simply this. So when you build your conceptual framework with the IV and the DV using your literature, the simple move you make from that is to build your hypothesis from that to the research objectives and finally to the research question. Simple. If you have the research question, the next thing we do is to design the research methodology and do the research. Look at this. I have written all of this. The hypothesis is this. I have taken HA, HA, hypothesis alternative, that is to prove. And HA, actually HA1, HA2, HA3. And this is to prove. The leadership has a relationship with the productivity, to prove. And the HA3 is the, there's a relationship between reward and the productivity. These three we have to prove. We have to prove, right? And did you notice that I have taken the null as well? I told you why we should do the null earlier. It is not only enough to prove your hypothesis, it is to nullify the existing thing. It is to nullify whatever the knowledge we have already or something, if you think that is not influencing the problem, we should nullify as well. I established it using examples. So here, we have three null hypotheses against each alternative hypothesis. So this is the null to disprove. Work environment does not influence productivity. Leadership does not have a relationship with productivity. Uh, there isn't any relationship between reward and the productivity. These are all to disprove, disprove, okay, nullify. So we have three alternative and we have three null hypotheses here. So each alternative hypothesis has a null also. If you're in some researchers, some supervisors, they would say, if you can only test the alternative, it is fine and follow him. But I would say, if you want to win your case, it is not only testing the hypothesis, but also nullifying the null hypothesis as well. That is better to prove your arguments. Okay, so it is not only about proving the food has the connection to the blood sugar, it is more advantageous to prove the exercise doesn't have the connection to the blood sugar, so then you can establish. It is not only, it is not, not only enough to prove uh, this, my client didn't commit this crime, but uh, it, it is not only enough to disprove the police uh, to say that uh, whatever you say is not wrong, not right. It is good for you to establish further that my client, there was no possibility existed at that time of crime because my client was not at the scene, something like that. So it is good for you to prove the alternative and disprove the null as well. Now, based on all these hypotheses, we have got the research objectives, okay? Simply this, look at that. The first hypothesis, work environment, and that is the, the first objective work environment, to study the influence of work environment. The second alternative hypothesis is connected to the second objective here. And the third one is connected to the third objective here. Okay, so simple, right? Now, finally, you can make some recommendation. It is uh, the final objective everyone has because they have to recommend. We have to, recommendation is about the, the prescription you write at the end of the test you do, the medicine, the treatment we give. So. To achieve this research objectives, again, look at this. For each objective, I have a question. To study the influence of work environment on employee productivity and how does work environment influence employee productivity? This may be only does, or maybe how does, it's up to you, right? And the second one is about the second objective, does leadership influence employee productivity? And the third one is about the third one. 
right? That one, the third one is about this one. The reward influence employee productivity, simple. So in one page, after you build your conceptual framework, we can get the hypothesis, we can get the research objectives and we can build the research question as well. And if you go in the reverse order from here, answering this, let me show that map as well. Answering this question will meet your first objective and meeting the first objective would test your first hypothesis. Okay, that's the order, that's the rule. <clears throat> okay, so I think it's clear, I hope. Let me move to the next slide if I have something left. And that is it. So well, I hope that I have given you a clear picture of this hypothesis. There are two types, alternative and the null. Null is what we have to disprove and alternative is what we have to prove. And to, to win your argument, to, to solve your problem, to convince uh, the people, it is uh, highly recommended to test the alternative hypothesis while nullifying the null hypothesis as well. And if you have this hypothesis, uh, you can easily find out your research objectives. And if you find your research objectives, you can easily find your research question. And you answer the research question, meet your research objective, meet your research objective, you test your hypothesis. And finally, you make a recommendation to solve your problem. Thank you very much. And I hope you have got the message of tonight. And uh, thank you very much again for joining me. Be safe, have a great night, good night. Thank you, see you next week. Thank you very much. Good night. Good night, thank you.